everybody, and welcome back to the WTF1 podcast post qualifying Spanish GP edition. Different, keeping it, mixing it up, keeping it fresh. You know what I mean? And we're, we're, well, I mean, you're probably feeling the energy already from the fact that it's obviously post qualifying. And uh, Tommy looks like he's very nonchalant and just wants this to be over. And I will make sure he wants it to be over by the end of this podcast. Um, but welcome, welcome uh, to Tommy and Katie. Good to have the band back together as always. Did we enjoy qualifying? It was all right. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> exciting things I, I, right, next question. Yeah. I regret yeah. I, re- I regret having a little cheeky dig about Leclerc and then it just came back to bite me immediately yeah, yeah. a little dig in the did watch Grace have her karma. onesie no so I'm saving it for You're the race so. you, yeah there's yeah. no point there's no point peaking qualifying is there you yeah. may as well use the special <laughs> powers that your baby has uh, with that with that particular outfit every single time uh, Verstappen has won when Grace has won that that onesie is that correct that is and then my friend yeah. bought her a Meta gp one with an air bastianini on it and he won the next race <laughs> wow very weird okay i know what i need to sort uh, grace out with right okay <laughs> let's move on to qualifying then and uh let's speak about shovel claire who didn't have the most straightforward pole position we've ever seen uh, of course topped fp1 fp2 fp3 don't think he topped both qualifying session before that, did he? I don't think he did, as in Q1 and Q2. But in Q3, he uh, had a spin on his first flying lap, and you're thinking, oh, no. Well, I'm thinking, oh, no. Tommy's thinking, oh, yeah. Uh, and then, of course, uh, got pole position, uh, which was kind of, of on the form book, wasn't it, really? <laughs> Ferrari brought quite a few major upgrades to their car. Red Bull, maybe not so much. Uh, and, uh, you know, Ferrari, Charles Leclerc in particular, was saying before qualifying in the, uh, the sort of, on the run-up uh, to the weekend interview saying, yeah, we're looking to be back at the front. And they've certainly done that. So yay for me. Woo! Yeah, it's the first Ferrari pole at this track since Kimi Raikkonen in 2008. And yeah, we saw Science had a few little moments, a few little purple sectors before they got taken away from him. And there was a part of me that I really hoped that science could be the one like to get pole because doing it in front of the home crowd, his first pole position, also the fact that his dad presented the Pirelli award afterwards, like that would just be so wholesome just to be like, here goes son, here's a tire. Oh, thanks dad. But um, <laughs> it wasn't to be because Charlotte Leclerc was on his A game once again. And uh, yeah, brilliant job from him. And yeah, just keeping, keeping fans on their toes with a cheeky little spin. I think it was you, Matt, that tweeted like, he's doing some donuts before giving yeah, them the main event. Lad. So yeah, it was a, a great pull from him. That science is thinking, what, he, what has he got to do? Because, you know, Leclerc has that spin thinking, this is my chance. And Leclerc, I think that's, that is 6-0, isn't it? To, to Charles over science yeah. in qualifying. So he's probably thinking, what have I, you know, got to do to beat him Poll and I can't believe I put this stat out on our on our page, but 13 polls now for Leclerc. That's only one behind Max, which is quite wild to think. Wow, that there. is wow. that is crazy. Yeah. Especially because their wins, sorry, Matt, aren't anywhere near. Like just just throw that out there. Four four wins for Leclerc, 23 for Verstappen. Oh but only but only one pole apart, which is wild. Um, but 13 polls. I was actually genuinely shocked by that. I know cool. that ended up being like a backhanded compliment. Yeah, that was, that was 13, yeah. uh, 13 yeah. polls. Same as Graham good, Hill. but not as Jack good as Brabham. Max. <laughs> it's not like I can even, you know, having pole positions yeah. is always one thing, but then actually securing the victory is more important. Uh, and uh, Sometimes course, he gets polled and you can't even start the race the next day. So Okay, guys, oh, wow. please. Wow. Both of you. Both <laughs> of you. Come Sorry. on. He gets pole position and this is not the slander I expected from Ooh, the pair okay. of you. Maybe Tommy. A little bit of, you know, backlash, but Tommy's wow. influenced me too much. Unbelievable. Um, the capes, capes in the pace, Katie. Thank you. <laughs> uh, you're, you're, you're both disgusting. Um, right, so let's go to the first question. Team WTF on member Jack C96. How important will track position be tomorrow? Red Bull and Mercedes looked f- uh, faster than Ferrari on race pace, so will having track position, assuming they get away well, be enough to win? I'm not entirely sure where that uh, assumption of Ferrari being slower than Mercedes and Red Bull uh, on race pace, or at least not as consistent. Because I think Christian Horner was spoken to, and I know it's obviously Christian Horner, but he was saying that it looks like the Red Bull and Ferrari are very much identical on pace 
uh, when it comes to Sunday and, and long runs. So maybe he's bluffing. Maybe I took what he said uh, too literally, but um, I don't think Ferrari necessarily uh, are off the pace. And track position, as we know, around Spain is is very crucial. Uh, that last chicane spreads the cars out far too much, and and that's the re- that's a re- one of the reasons why everybody wants to, to get rid of it. So. Of course, it's important for Ferrari to be right up there at the front of the field with both Leclerc and Sainz. Verstappen doesn't have Perez in the near vicinity. Well, I say near vicinity, obviously Perez P5, but still not right there. Uh, so at the, potentially at the start, it'll be a 2v1, uh, depending on how well Sergio gets away. Uh, but you've got some feisty Mercedes in there as well. Look, it's, it's teed up very nicely, but then you have to remind yourself that it's Catalonia. <laughs> I'm ready for the, the race where... Verstappen can't get anywhere by Leclerc because of that final chicane and you tweet about what a great chicane it is and how it's your favourite. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm going to delete the video yeah. off our YouTube channel about changing, the, um, changing it. Yeah, 73% win rate from pole position at Catalonia. It's the most of any track, even Monaco. So Even uh, Monaco? Even Monaco. So What's Monaco? Do we know? Uh, it's like I saw a stat about it and Monaco is quite far down the list but i guess that is skewed by it's been around for years and years and years so i guess back in the day you had so many reliability issues and it's been going since 1950 so um but yeah spain is the track you want to be on pole um and i think even with verstappen's we say we say straight line speed i think again it is just set up um but even with that it's going to be difficult with the um chicane but i mean i hope it's a a nice battle again. And if it's a three-way fight for the win, but with Merck involved as well, that would just be amazing. Can we can we have a good Spanish Grand Prix? No, I, I, to be fair, I'll take a boring one because uh, every time <laughs> Verstappen rocks up behind mm. Leclerc, he wins. So <laughs> it's not... Well, yeah, don't forget last year as well, Verstappen started P2 and he took the lead by turn one. So it could happen tomorrow. And that, never was, tight. Know. And that was tight as well between Hamilton that and was... Verstappen. Um, but yeah, there's position is important. I think more well, going off what Tommy said, 22 out of the last 30, wait, 22 people started on pole and then went to win the race out of the last 30 races there. So, um, and overtaking, although we joke and say it's been poor, it has been improving year over year. Uh, catching is one thing on Reddit, Sh- massive shout out to them. They have the spreadsheet of all spreadsheets and they make record of every overtake and every Grand Prix ever. Um, and so like 2018, there was 13 overtakes in the race, 13, one, three, 2019 went up to 26, 2020, 32, 2021, 51. So hopefully the only way is up. And especially with these new 2022 22 cars, it should help a bit. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. George Russell was saying that he thinks he'll be able to challenge the Ferraris tomorrow. So whether there's any truth to that, We'll have to wait and see. But yeah, I'm actually like really looking forward to it. So 50, 51 yeah. overtakes. So you're saying there's going to be 70 yeah. in the race <laughs> if it carries yes. on. And we'll see 12 of them. Yeah, I was Through about to say, looking forward to seeing three of them. <laughs> oh, God. You I love guys, that, by the way. Honestly, your that... beef with the TV direction. <laughs> oh, no, it's not beef. We are representing the fans. Um, but yeah, I think it's funny that we, we this catching is one thing on Reddit. Yeah, I've also uh, shouted them out before. Literally taking what they say as fact so like no, yeah. yeah i've got a spreadsheet that must be legit and that must be absolutely um yeah factually correct i'm, I'm sure it is but it's just funny how we're like yeah we saw it on reddit it's fast, fast, depends fast. if it's like the i don't have time to talk, to uh, count every overtake so depends if it's like the overtaking award where like some of them are really questionable because obviously seb won that mm-hmm. last year didn't he and one of his uh one of his overtakes was yeeting Ocon out the way and then driving past him. So, I mean, it's an overtake. It's just not. It's just illegal. Every little help. Yeah. Uh, right. Next question at Albers underscore Jasper. How worried are Red Bull about reliability? Well, Tommy, you are you know our man on the ground when it comes to uh, Red Bull and uh, fanboying over Verstappen. Uh, I mean, I, I, we don't have direct contact with Red Bull, but I'm sure there is still some reliability concerns. Of course, Verstappen at the end of Q3 having. A DRS issue, it sounded like, from what they were saying. Um, so obviously not a huge problem, but still something else creeping in and not necessarily what we saw uh, last year. But of course, the cars have changed a huge amount. But, you know, Verstappen has still won every race he's finished. Not that he would have won every race if he'd finished all of them. But still, it's a, it's a scary stat for both his pace, but also on the other side, that sometimes they don't finish. So 
I'm sure they are still a little bit worried. Yeah, like you say, it sounded like it was a DRS, DRS issue rather than a loss of power, which is what Max radioed. Uh, but yeah, I'm not too worried about Rebels' reliability. Ready for this to be the biggest jinx ever. But I'd like to think that they've kind of ironed out those issues. Um, but we'll have to wait and see. I really hope I haven't Yeah, that's going to age badly. Um, <laughs> yeah. There's always that worry in the back of back of my mind with reliability with, with Red Bull after those two races and then to happen again in qualifying. I did, my first thought was always lost power, um, but I'm guessing the DRS issue, was it the fact that it didn't open and then he just was like, well, I'm not improving my lap here, so back, backed out of it, um, mm. I'm assuming. So, yeah, not a little bit concerning, um, but however much you'll be saying, oh, I do hope uh, <laughs> you'll be hoping for the, no. the, the, the issue. I do want to see oh, a good no. race between them. Do I would no, <laughs> no? I want a close battle where Leclerc wins. Is that that's fair? You know, yeah. I, I yeah yeah. On, on, honestly, and people will not believe me when I say that when I watch a race, I don't want Leclerc to jog on thirty seconds down the road because it is boring. I want to see a, a contest, and even if Mercedes end up winning, I, I still want that that close battle. Uh, so yeah. I don't. I do not wish for your no, favorite no, driver. Jo- I was joking, but I yeah, know, let's, but I, we, let's we have to this. clarify. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. uh, yeah. Next yeah. question. Summer is coming, the sun is shining, and shirts are off. That's why Manscaped has their performance package 4.0 to keep the party in your pants looking crisp and refreshing all summer long. Dive headfirst into summer by joining the 4 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped by going to manscaped.com for 20% off plus free shipping with the code WTF1. The Manscaped Performance Package 4.0 has everything you need to prepare that summer body. Inside this package, you'll find their Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, Weed Whacker Ear and Nose Hair Trimmer, Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant, Crop Reviver Toner, Performance Boxer Briefs, and a travel bag to hold your goodies. Their Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to their advanced skin safe technology. Manscaped has even thrown in two free gifts to their Performance Package 4.0, the Manscaped boxers and the Shed Travel Bag that will bring your comfort to another level. Get 20% off plus free shipping with the code WTF1 at manscaped.com. That's 20% off plus free shipping with the code WTF1 at manscaped.com. This is the summer to turn your package into the full package with Manscaped. Do you like the sound of free beer? Of course you do. Who doesn't? Simply cover just £5.95 for postage and Beer52 will send not eight, not nine, but ten free beers to your house. Go to www.beer52.com forward slash WTF1 to claim your pack of ten free beers now. Every month, Beer52 sends their members a fresh case of craft beer. This month, their double Dutch case will take you on a beer trip around the Netherlands' finest independent craft breweries. Since 2014, Beer52 and their members have supported over 500 breweries and drank beer from more than 40 different countries. Try a double IPA from Two Chefs at a cool 7.5% and D Molens Op and Top, a beautifully easygoing pale ale. On the dark side this month, there's Daily Grind, a sessionable stout by Morisutel. Not a fan of dark beers? Simply choose the light box. Also included in every case is the ever-insightful Ferment magazine and a couple of tasty snacks. Even if, after all that, you're still unsatisfied, you can simply pause or cancel at any time. That's www.beer52.com forward slash WTF1 to claim your free case now. That's beer52.com forward slash WTF1. Remember, you have to be over 18. Uh, Ardy Van Bilgi 2. Why did the Mercedes look like they were getting closer to Red Bull and Ferrari? Hegemony. What does that mean when it's at home? <laughs> oh, oh my word. I didn't even read that. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Oh, hopefully that's not rude. Only to get trashed once again. Are they really improving or not? I've, just, I've not just made up a word, people. That's what to put in the sheet. Maybe this person has used a, a oh, word no, I've never is, heard of. Uh... Leadership or dominance. Words? I have never heard of or seen that word right. before in my life. Anyway, back to the question. Why did Mercedes look like they were getting closer and then they got trashed? I don't think they got trashed. I mean, fourth and sixth on the grid is not exactly getting trashed. And are they really improving or not was the question. Yeah, I think they're taking steps forward. Miami was a good start. They then got a little bit 
uh, mixed up after Friday because where they looked really good and then uh, dropped off a little bit. But they're certainly moving forward. Uh, it's not going to be an overnight, well, Mercedes are on pole and they're going to win the race. Uh, but to be within, what is it, half a second of pole? I think that's around a track that's so car dependent. I think they'll definitely take it. And as Team WTF member Jack C96 reckons, they're, they're, they're looking good on the long run pace as well. So I think they'll be quite happy. Yeah, the the Mercedes is definitely they didn't get that trashed. It, the the thing with Miami was the fact that there was so much hype around it, and then Russell didn't even get out of Q two, did he? So um, this time they've both got in there, and Russell's beaten a Red Bull, so they are doing a lot better. They look like they could get in the mix, and I think the key thing is going to be what that race pace is like because if if they can be there or thereabouts. It could be, you know, an exciting season with them getting in the mix because they have picked up an obscene amount of points for how slow that car has been compared to the others. And the fact that... Um, you wrote them you, off. I did. Um, <laughs> not, not sweating at all. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's... Um, it would be good if they, they could be on the on the back of them because... Um, a three-way fight would be just mega because we have, however much this season has been quite refreshing and good, um, it has always been like Ferrari and Rebels so far ahead just steaming off into the distance. So if we had three teams, you know, potentially six drivers in the mix, then, you know, we could see some really exciting battles for the win. I would love to go back to Tommy when we were making the predictions for 2022. <laughs> And you were like, no way. Mercedes are going to be so I mean, far do you blame me? No, no, I don't blame you at all. Yeah. Uh, but it is quite funny if we could just tell our, our past selves, like, oh, by the way, uh, we'd be discussing whether Mercedes will be within half a second. Uh, it's whether, crazy. Yeah, questioning whether Mercedes will even win a race this year. <laughs> Madness. Madness. Oh, jinx. Um, yeah, George Russell coming into the season even said that he thought there could be a five-way battle like five teams battling for the championship but little did he know that thought, Mercedes might not even be in that drivers then. I was like is he being really savage to like Perez or science there yeah <laughs> him out. Uh, but no I think well Mercedes have brought so many improvements here this weekend you know they've made changes to their floor which seems to have helped with the porpoising so although they're still having porpoising troubles in the corners it seems to be pretty much eradicated in the straights which is huge in terms of like morale I guess for the team because this has been such an issue that's haunted them since the start of the season um, and the drivers complaining of back pains or <laughs> pains on their bum or something from like all the bumping around it sounds like things just a bit better and you know Hamilton is like he's bouncing around the the pit lane and the paddock but just because he's happy and he's a cheery man at the moment which is good to see but yeah it's uh I suppose a little bit surprising to see them in fourth and sixth because I think a lot of people did expect maybe a bit more from them um Hamilton said that he's still finding a little bit of um, problem with the rear end of the car and George also said post quality that they didn't have the tires in the right window whatsoever um he said we were always quickest in sector one which is true George was setting purple lap time or purple sectors at one point which was great um and then we were always struggling in sector three we just couldn't find the right balance to be honest so hey, it's only kind of like one of the first, we will discount Miami, but like the first proper weekend where Mercedes have actually really had their name in the hat. Is that a phrase? We're making it one. It um, is now. <laughs> I'm just making them up at this point. <laughs> hey, I know what I mean. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think these things can take time. So I'm just sure they're happy the to hat. be settling with four. Put my name You're in the hat. The name in the, isn't yeah. it like Put my name in, in the hat. I thought it was putting your name in the ring but or like something. Like in contention. No, no, no. It says put my name in the hat is an idiom. It says to submit one's own or someone else's name for consideration in a selection, such as competition, application, pool, there you go. election. Sure. Kind of. Yeah, <laughs> kind it works. Yeah. 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 Well it's well better done. than the it, other ones I've yeah, made up. Not, at least it kind together, of made, so. it made sense to me. So that's all good. Progress. Uh, <laughs> um, but yes, that's my, my take on the Mercedes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lovely stuff. Throw your hat in the ring, maybe. I don't know. Anyway. Um, is it hat? You throw your hat you throw in the ring, don't in you? The ring. Yeah, throw Why would you throw your hat in the ring? Cap in the ring. Because it's like a... It's a phrase. For like ball fighting, isn't it? Oh, I don't, I don't. Anyway, we've gone cap. really off. We've gone really off topic. Uh, <laughs> right. Next question is from Eisenacher. Eisenacher? 
Lap time deleted for track limits on Lando's lap seemed pretty harsh and was barely visible. This is Freitas's first race as race director. Is he getting his elbows out? Well, when, when we first saw it, I did react and go, went, oh, really? Come on. Like there's, it's literally gravel from past the, uh, past that white line. But on the other side, we've been asking for consistency. We've been asking for a clear cut rule book around track limits. And we got it. The white line, if you go past it, uh, more than two wheels, it's GG's. And uh, it's, it, it was basically that with Lando. He crossed the, the white line as much as it was minuscule. It's, it's part of the rules. So it seems harsh, but that is literally what's written in the rule book. So I don't think it's harsh on reflection. Uh, and it's just uh, the way the cookie crumbles. It's so true. The rule is, it's the white line. It's the same rule for everyone. This is what Lando has been saying post-session. He said, you know, the rule is the rule. I also feel it's silly when you have gravel, which is one centimetre away, that you still have the white line and you can't just use one centimetre more and use the gravel as the limit. I think it's a silly thing, but it's the rule and it's the same for everyone. And I was the only one who got penalised, so it's my fault. But yeah, interestingly, well, I find it interesting because I'm a nerd, but like there's been some changes to the Spanish GP circuit this weekend. So the race director's room has been upgraded. There's more screens available for them to monitor monitor things like track limits and the safety of drivers out there. But there's also a new signalling system with luminous panels along the track and a system to control the track limits. So that might be how we could see like they knew straight away that Norris had done wrong because everything is so new and fresh and all this kind of groovy stuff so um because yeah looking at the onboards obviously the FIA will have access to better ones than maybe we sh- were shown on the main feed but yeah you look and you're like really like that's just a t- tiny amount but the rules are the rules so um means Danny Rick has finally out qualified Lando this year if you want to be picky about it but sometimes yes, unfortunate sometimes you can't tell either can you on the onboards um because you're like because it looks maybe a little bit like oh is that tire slightly over the edge um so the fact that they've got these sensors now is a good thing but yeah uh pretty much the same as what you guys said we we applauded them the fact that i think we even made a, a graphic about his quotes that it was a bit of like a mic drop that they're like the track is the white lines deal with it and we're all applauding it so we can't now change our mind just because uh one of the popular drivers has uh broken the rules and fair play for lando for co- basically just saying yeah they're the rules so it's it's unlucky and harsh but they're the rules so fair enough yeah you can't disagree with it it's literally in 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 writing uh, right final question at rmx rmxd why is the green red ball so slow well I mean, the whole thing's just very confusing. It's very odd the way that they've just whipped out a completely new car. And they're like, hey, it's fine. We've had this in preparation for months or whatever they said. Maybe not months. Don't quote me. But No, they did. They, they, they claim that it's purely coincidental. And uh, the fact that it's been, they had that car before Red Bull even revealed their car in testing. Yeah, they had it at launch, didn't they? They o- said. Okay, hi. Okay. Seb said he saw the designs yeah. at launch and then Red Bull launched a show car, didn't they? So mm, interesting. Mm. Well, I don't think so. Don't be suspicious. Uh, don't be suspicious. You can literally see the car. <laughs> what would be the actual percentage chance of them creating a car like Red Bull and they've both done it independently? I would love to know because I think it's in the decimal points. Um, yeah. But why is it slow? Because, well, look, we're going to assume here, aren't we, that Aston Martin have taken inspiration from Red Bull, whether that is legally down the, oh, oh, that looks good. Let's copy that. Do a little tracing, you know, whatever, all the, all the stuff they do. Tracing point. On, on the car, <laughs> tracing point. There you go. Yeah. Throwback. Um, or illegally, which Helmet Marco seems to believe it might be that on that route, whatever. If, I mean, if it is illegal, it's big problems for Aston Martin. If they actually get if it gets proven somehow, uh, you, know, you have to cast your minds back to Spygate with uh, McLaren and Ferrari, and they will find a hundred million. Although a lot of that was because of Ron Dennis. Lawrence, Lawrence Stroll, I'll know anyway. Yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> hundred million. It's like nothing. Go. Okay, because wasn't the hundred million as well? Uh, because of Ron, like Ron Dennis, Ron Dennis was, uh, Max Mosley had Ron Dennis, and he said he even was quoted in a book saying something like 10, five, 10 million uh, was for, yeah. five was for the fine, and ninety five million was because Ron. Dennis was a beep. 
it was a beep. Yeah. Uh, that's the exact phrase. Um, but yeah. <laughs> Why are they so slow? In my opinion, because they've tried to copy it, but there's so much more internal workings to a car, different engines, as you said, Tommy, in the watch long, I think it was. And there's so many different components that, okay, fair enough. You might get the, the airflow slightly similar to what the Red Bull is, but it doesn't mean it's going to work. Uh, and it, it doesn't, not right now anyway, uh, for this particular occasion, it's not worked out. Yeah, I don't know what it's. It's kind of you couldn't make it up, really. It's you could say quite amusing the fact that the car has just completely flopped. I mean, we were shocked, weren't we, in the quali watch along that there was so much talk. I think in FP three, no, sorry, FP two was yesterday. So there was a moment, wasn't it, where Veta was up there and everyone's sort of screenshotting the times, like, oh, Aston Martin. Is this going to be good? And then neither of them, and they've done all right recently. Um, Yeah. They've looked a bit better and then bought this new car and both drivers out in Q1. Uh, Absolute shocker. But yeah, imagine, imagine if something does happen and they get essentially busted for it and, you know, they're getting a huge fine or a penalty for essentially a car that can't even get into Q2. It's a bit of a disaster for them. But hey, a uh, five-year plan or whatever it was for Aston Martin. Yeah, oh my goodness. Yeah, five-year plan. Um, yeah, I don't know, really. It was a bit of a surprise to see them out so early. I think Seb said that he was expecting to be around P10 and he got P16, so it's quite a way off there. Um, but from the sounds of what the drivers were saying, it just sounds like they had lots of oversteer and that they were struggling with the balance and stuff. But maybe uh, it is the case of bringing, they've brought such dramatic upgrades. It's not just a little change here and a little change there. It's almost like reshape the entire car. Like there doesn't seem to be an area of the car that hasn't been changed and manipulated in some way to suit these new upgrades. So maybe it's just a case of trial and error, seeing how they get on. And we might be able to go, I think Monaco last year, the Aston Martin was fairly strong at, I think both same, I think finished fifth and Lance was like eighth or ninth or something. I can't remember. Lance All I can remember from Monaco is the Lance Stroll <laughs> replay. That's my <laughs> one memory from Monaco last year. Um, so, so perhaps they'll be able to get a bit better. And then obviously Seb did well in Baku. So who knows? But it was certainly a bit of a surprise. And I'm sure Aston Martin are absolutely hating all this press right now Mm. Uh, it's not not good i mean they've they've done it once it's not like they don't know how people are going to react to it like that this organization as racing point previously did this at least that car was good yeah exactly at least they were like oh wow that actually works whereas this one at the moment hasn't (laughs) uh hasn't worked tommy with the sass love it he is so Uh, you can tell he has less sleep he's just like no filter boom yeah that's true it's amazing uh right let's uh well this might be quite negative as well from tommy because our predictions i think collectively we may well be on for a zero point scorer (laughs) Uh, i might be the closest but let's see uh so i've got well i've gone for stroll out qualifies vettel that was because it was very much on the spot and he he did not out qualify vettel so i've already got zero points for that and Mick Schumacher scores points. He's currently starting 10th, although let's see what the stewards say. I don't think they'll uh, move them, but um, they might well get a reprimand or something. Uh, Katie? I went for <laughs> Williams' Q2 appearance. That didn't happen. Where, they where both they, finished they finish? last. They finished yeah. 19th and they 20th, both finished okay? Last. <laughs> they both finished last. They were both as bad as each other. They both finished last, so that was fun. <laughs> and then I also went for Hamilton and will finish ahead of Russell, so... And he's starting Hashtag. behind him in Believe the race. Believe in Lewis. Hopefully he'll get me a point tomorrow. Yep. We'll see. And to complete the quali clean sweep, <laughs> I've gone for Science Gets Pole. Um, <laughs> but no. And Stroll in the points. So we're, we're already already down to hoping for a point each. Yeah, Can't right now mine now. is the only one by a slim margin of one position that is uh, uh, making a point at the moment. So let's see. And the three from the fans, Sam Shu 24, Zhou Guan Yu Q3 in points. No. no. Robin's form, it's literally every qualifying prediction is wrong. Uh, but Robin's formula, both Aston Martins in the <laughs> points. And then King Morpheus, Leclerc and Verstappen have their first coming together, causing at least one to DNF. Will That's that be, probably our closest dun, one. Dun, dun. <laughs> will that be the thing that happens to give Signs his first GP win? We will find out. But, uh, if it is, the podcast will be spicy. 
It will be. Oh God, can you, I can't. I don't even. I don't even know how we're going to do this. And <laughs> we haven't had a collision yet uh, where we have to discuss it neutrally. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be great. I'm just going to mute uh, myself and just watch. Yeah, you can go get a cup of tea if you want, Katie. During that segment, yeah. it'll be fine. Um, speaking of you, Katie, uh, fun thoughts. Well, actually, I have one prepped because I'm thinking about it. Um, oh, I wanted to Boring. say. A hu- I can't bloody win. <laughs> I wanted to say a huge congrats to Haas because they made their first Q- double Q3 appearance with both their cars for the first time since Brazil 2019. Matt, you kind of alluded to it earlier, though. A little bit of a cloud hanging over that at the moment because <laughs> both Kevin and Mick have been summoned to the stewards for driving unnecessarily slowly during qualifying, which... I mean, would be a bit of a funny thing to be summoned for last year when they were literally out the back anyway, just for being too slow. But the stewards haven't really elaborated on that. So hopefully it won't be too long to find out what the offence is or if they'll just let it fly. But yeah, what an amazing job from Haas. And also the fact that Mick Schumacher had this brake fire or fire at the right rear of his car and the car was literally in pieces and they got it back together for quali and then they achieved that. So they are my stars of the day that's not a thing but i'm making it a thing you've made us you've made imagine, a segment in the podcast. imagine if they get both like disqualified from qualifying now and your final thought says well done house <laughs> and by the time it's released <laughs> oh no oh. that would not be good uh, uh, and also shout out to bottas uh, he was just under a tenth away from out qualifying hamilton again which would have been funny uh, but uh, that did not happen speaking of shout out to bottas um people might have seen it on the website but he made Fifty thousand euros for charity by selling pictures of his butt. Can we get some like context to that for people that haven't maybe? Seen so that if you've not seen the Instagram picture uh, <laughs> that he put up, yeah, only fins. Good one. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's really I good. I must admit, I, somebody I can't remember who. There are a few people that commented that under the article, so I can't oh, take credit for that. So, Sorry, so guys. yeah, if you saw his Instagram photo of him in. Oh God, I just had to go on the article and look at it again. Uh, Colorado, <laughs> he was in and he was doing a bit of skinny dipping and he has sold that picture uh, and 5,000 people bought it. And I think, did Lewis Hamilton say it's the best picture he's ever seen or something? Something like But he got really confused, <laughs> bless him, because some I think it was Rosanna Tennant asked him. Shot. Yeah, Mercedes did a Photoshop and put a picture of Lewis balancing on a nearby rock. And then Lewis was confused and was like, is that the photo that's being sold? <laughs> so he thought that 5,000 people had bought this picture of him on a rock with Bottas with his arse out. Um, but no, he isn't in that one. But I guess people could always like buy a little sticker and add them on. But yeah, fair play if you're one of the people that bought it, because that's a piece of F1 history right there. Cheeky moment. Sure. Yeah, well, what an ending to this podcast. Uh, Tommy, final thoughts? Uh, there we go. That's what I, we that like was my final thoughts. That's what we like to... No, no, no. That's, I'm going to do an Aston was... Martin and copy Katie's. Well done, Hass. <laughs> <laughs> no, it needs to be slightly worse. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay, Decent well, thanks, Tommy. From really House. appreciate it. Decent. For... Thank you, Tommy. Wow, what a what insight from, uh, from you there. You can tell Verstappen didn't get pole. And my <laughs> final thoughts are, well done, Charles Leclerc, on entertaining the fans and also being a beast in the in the car. No. Uh, anyone else I should uh, say thank you? Not thank you. Well done, too. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you, everybody. Thank you, Charles Leclerc. Um, shame so. for Fernando Alonso, uh, who completely Mate. messed up his qualifying uh, behind, uh, I think it was Lando, but they were both on outlaps and uh, it just didn't go too well. And then he blamed himself and the team, uh, which was a shame. Yuki Tsunoda as well. Big shout out to him out qualifying Gasly. <laughs> So I'm surprised oh, you, you haven't actually you mentioned that, Tommy, <laughs> to be fair. I'm very disappointed in you. Uh, standard but, uh, stuff these days. Standard, well, you're just so used to it. Love it. Okay, well, that'll be the last time Yuki out-qualifies Yeah, <laughs> this whole oh. season. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for watching and listening. Uh, hashtag WTF1 Podcast. If you want to get involved in the conversation, leave a like, five star, comment, whatever you want to do to let us know how much you love the WTF1 Podcast. Uh, I don't know what Katie's doing there. You're going up. I'm doing some random thing with my thumbs up. Amazing. Well, on that note, thank you, everybody. Audio listeners, it was great. Uh, you missed out. Uh, but there you go. Thank you, everybody. Take care. <laughs> Enjoy the race. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Wow. Oh, we're doing one of those. Like the... You're going to go out of focus Oh, yeah, like now. a little TikTok trend. Sorry. Three, two, wait, three, wait. Oh, Tommy's fallen over. Oh. <laughs> it was so hey. bad. Three, two,
one. Oh, Kate, Katie, do you, are you on? Uh, am I on a delay to you? Oh, me and Tommy were like that, and you were like. <laughs> <laughs> It's probably my rubbish internet. Try again. Sorry. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> Katie. I even went early. Yeah, I think it is because sometimes there is a bit of a pause. You literally went three, two, and I went right. early, and you I go still on behind. One. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's wrong. <laughs> 